What's going on y'all? Today we're going to look at how to create this live uh, printed edge effect like you can see here on the type and this was requested, uh, I posted this video a while back and then a few commenters, Elliot said, how do you give it natural touch edges? And someone else said, tell us the secrets. So today I am going to tell you the secrets. And I do have to mention, I initially learned this technique in a uh, Kindred studio. This is uh, Andrew Fairclow. His work is just incredible, as you can see here. But I initially learned the technique in his Skillshare class, and it looks like on his website, which I'll link up in the description, he has a link to where you can actually take that Skillshare class. Okay, and the last thing before we dive in, the font that I'm using is this one, New Spirit by Newland. And this is available on Adobe Fonts, so if you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you can use it. Basically, this is just a revival of the really popular font, Winsor. And if you want to learn a little bit more about Winsor, you can go to the Font Review Journal, where Bethany Heck has written up an excellent review of Winsor. This is a super popular font, um, and it's a super old font, too. As you can see here, it was released in 1905. All right, let me just go ahead and turn off this final layer here and just turn back on my type. This is just a clean layer, clean vector layer. And what I have here are just four different versions of this, uh, and I named each layer, but these are all the same thing. So if I turn them all on, you see that nothing really changes. So let me select this type small ripple layer and that actually says exactly what we're going to do to it. So let me zoom out a little bit here and I'm going to go up to the filter menu up here. But before I do that, it's very important that these layers are smart objects. Mine already are, but uh, you can right click your layer and then convert it to a smart object by using this if you need to get that done. Then come up to filter, distort, and ripple. So in this ripple dialog, you can choose from small, medium, or large, and we're going to be doing each of those, but they're going to be on their separate layers. So we'll start with small, and I'll do 75%. As you can see, you can like jack this thing way up, and obviously it gets super weird and crazy, so I stick to a little bit lower numbers. So 75% for that, and I'll click OK. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing for the medium layer, filter, distort, Ripple, and then this time I'll choose medium, and 75 might be a little bit intense, so I'll do 65 and hit OK. And then we're just going to come in and do the same thing with the large. And this is where you really start to see it, so look, it gets pretty crazy at 65, so let's just drop that down to like 50, and then hit OK. So as we can see here, um, it definitely gives us that warm edge. But it looks a little too uniform. Like if you look at this U right here, you can see it's like placing these at the exact same spot along this. So this does not look as good as it could. So let's fix it. I'm just going to zoom out here. And what we're going to do, we have our small, medium, and large. We're going to add a mask to each of them. And then we're going to invert this mask. So with the mask selected, I hit Command I on a Mac or Control I on a Windows. And that just inverts our mask. So create mask, command I. And what you can see is we no longer have any of those ripples in here. So that's exactly what we want. So to add the ripples back in, we're just going to reveal some of this by painting white into the mask. So come down here. I'll start on the small layer and just click into your mask like this. Come over here and make sure you have black and white selected for these. I'm going to hit X on my keyboard to switch the uh, background in the foreground. So I want to have white in my foreground. Next, I'll hit B on my keyboard to go to my brush tool. And I just want to make sure I have a hard round brush. You really don't want this to be um, soft because we want to get that whole edge in there. So let me just adjust the size of this brush here. Okay, great. So I have this brush here and basically you're just going to start painting in certain areas and that's revealing the ripple texture. And so what this does is it keeps it from looking too uniform, like how it was looking before, and this will give it that kind of natural printed effect that we're going for. So let me just click around a bit and reveal this. It might be a little hard to see since this is the small one. Okay, and then let's do the same thing for the medium. So come up to our medium layer, click into the mask. Again, that's very important. You have to make sure the mask is selected. Next, with my white brush, I am just going to start clicking and revealing certain parts of this ripple effect. 
And let's just go ahead and do this one more time for the large. And this one I'll use pretty sparingly. And boom, that is how you get this warm edge. Uh, as you can see here, if I zoom in a little bit, we'll see it even better. And so let me go ahead and turn these layers off real quick and then turn back on my final and turn on this mask. So as you can see, I added some texture to it here. Um, and I did one other effect and I actually have two other videos that will kind of teach you how to finish this effect and get the fully textured piece that you see here. That's going to do it for today's video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me over on Instagram where I post short tips and tricks about design. I'll see you next time.